So this is the last tutorial in your course. I'm going to show you how to solve or how to do, use the really rich method to find an approximate solution for the displacement of a simply supported Euler Bernoulli beam. So first before we find the approximate solution using the really rich method we're going to find the exact solution by uh, by solving the differential equation. So I have a simp uh, simply supported beam with length is equal to 10 meters, constant moment of inertia, aligned with the coordinate uh, ac uh, axis x1. The beam is subjected to a distributed load q is equal to negative 25 kilonewton per meter, applied uh, in the direction shown. The beam is hinged at both ends. We need to find the displacement, rotation, bending moment, and shearing force by two methods. First, by solving the differential equation, and then by using the really rich method. When we use the really rich method, we're going to assume polynomials of degrees 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to assume the beam to be linear elastic with Young's smallness 200 gigapascal and we're going to assume that it's an Euler Bernoulli beam, um, ignoring a Poisson's ratio, and we're going to compare with the Rady Ritz method. So, first, we're going to solve. Uh, so, first, let's clear all the variables. So, we're starting from scratch. We are not, uh, we don't have anything in the memory. I'm also going to clear anything that I'm going to use for the differential equation. Okay, so to solve the differential equation, uh, D solve, let's call it A. The, the differential equation of equilibrium is EI multiplied by the fourth derivative of Y with respect to X is equal to Q. Q is equal to negative 25. The boundary conditions are Y of 0 is 0 y of l is 0. The moment, which is the second ei, multiplied by the second derivative of y at the beginning is 0, and the moment at the end is 0. So these are the four boundary conditions that we need. Solve, y, solve for y in term, terms of x, shift enter, and here's the function, I'm going to utilize this, y exact is equal to y when I utilize e. So this is the uh, y of x, sorry. So this is y exact is equal to the function y of x when I utilize that expression. And I'm going to put uh, theta is equal to dy exact with respect to x. The moment is equal to ei multiplied by d theta with respect to x and the shear is equal to dm with respect to x. Shift enter. So this is the displacement. Displacement, theta, moment, shear. Okay, so this is the exact solution. Now first, uh, we cannot assume, so for any approximate solution we have to assume something. So if we assume y to be equal to a constant, y is equal to a0. So let's say approximate. So if we assume y is, uh, y1 is equal to a naught, just a constant, but we know that y at the first support is equal to 0, which will make a0 equal, a naught is equal to 0 which will make the displacement everywhere zero. If I say y is equal a naught plus a1x, a linear function, it's the same. At the displacement here is zero will make a naught zero, the displacement at the end will, is zero will make a1 zero, and so again I will not be able to solve for anything because the two constants will be known. So the first thing I can do is a naught a1x, a2 multiplied by x squared. So notice what I'm doing here. I'm assuming an approximate solution to be equal to a0, a1x, a2x squared. 
and look what the exact solution actually looks like the exact solution is right here it's actually x x cubed x power 4 so I'm utilizing a, 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 I'm utilizing a parabola to approximate a fourth degree polynomial okay so let's assume that y is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared this y has to satisfy the essential boundary conditions the essential boundary conditions for these beams are two types the displacements and the rotations so don't forget there are two essential boundary conditions the displacements and the rotations the rotations here are not restrained so I don't need to worry about them but the displacements are restrained at this end and at this end I have to make sure that this displacement satisfied this this the, this function satisfies that the displacement here is 0 and the displacement here is 0 I'm going to do this by saying solve I'm going to call equation 1 is equal to y1 when x is equal to 0 and equation 2 is equal to y1 when x is equal to l and I'm going to solve these two equations and I'm going to find a0 and a1 I'm going to call this A. So what will happen here is that it will tell me that A0 has to be 0 and A1 has to be equal to negative A2L. Okay, so I have to now substitute this back into Y1. So Y1 is equal to Y1 when I use these values for A0 and A1. Shift enter. And now Y1 is function or this approximate solution has only one variable, A2. So the only variable that I need now to find is A2. So I need to minimize the potential energy of the system to find this A2. The potential energy of the system is equal to one uh, is equal to the internal energy minus the work done by external forces. Okay. So the internal energy Notice, this is the main difference between this type of beam and the previous type of beam, which is beams under axial loading. For beams under uh, lateral loading, the internal energy is the integral of EI over 2 multiplied by the second derivative of Y which is that, that approximate solution, Y1 with respect to X twice. So the second derivative of y with respect to x, twice, all power 2. This is integrated x from 0 to L. So this is the internal energy, the work done by the external forces. Let's see what uh, the external forces that we have. We have reactions and we have a distributed load. The reactions are not going to appear because the displacement is 0 at the supports because the displacement is zero at the supports, there's no work done at the supports. But the, there's work done by the work force Q. And this is a distributed load, so the work done is in the integral of this Q, which is equal to negative 25, multiplied by Y1. Integrated X from zero to L. Why did I use an integral here? I used an integral here because Q is a distributed load. If I had a concentrated load, I would simply just multiply the force by the displacement. Shift enter. And here's the potential energy of the system. I'm going to call it potential energy 1. That corresponds to the first y1. And potential energy is only function of one variable, a2. So I'm going to differentiate. I'm going to call equation 1. Is differentiate the potential energy 1 with respect to a2 and a equals solve this equation 1 is equal to 0 find a2 and utilize it. y1 use this solution indeed this is the value of a2 and this is the final solution after I use this uh, solution and uh, 
that's and let's find the corresponding rotation moment and shear so theta 1 is equal to the first derivative of y1 moment 1 is equal to ei multiplied by the, fr the first derivative of theta 1 and shear 1 is equal to dm1 by dx then here's the approximate solution for the displacement oh I have to say well, this is y1 y1 equal to y1 after utilizing this shift enter so this is the approximate displacement the approximate rotation the approximate moment the approximate shear is zero okay now if you see that the approximate shear is zero because I used a very bad approximation for the displacement so I'm going to utilize another one let's utilize another approximation copy let's utilize y2 and let's add a term and equation 1 and equation 2 these are the boundary conditions these will not change these will not change and I'm going to utilize this shift enter this will not uh, actually this is y2 this is y2 I'm setting y2 is 0 y2 is 0 at x equal L and at 0 at x equal 0 and now I'm solving for y2 shift enter and here's the new uh, approximation function of 2 I got rid of a naught and a1 so now I only have a2 and a3 I got rid of got rid of a naught and a1 by utilizing the boundary conditions okay so I have y2 now I need the potential energy that corresponds to y2 the potential energy is equal to the same but I'm utilizing y2 instead of y1 and y2 instead of y1 and well let's look at the potential energy expression the potential energy expression will be function of a2 a2 and a3 a2 a3 and a3 so to minimize the potential energy I need to make sure that the potential energy is minimum which means the equation I have two equations potential energy partial potential energy with respect to a2 partial potential energy with respect to a3 and I'm going to solve those two equations equal to zero and find those a2 and a3 and I'm going to utilize this solution store it in a variable called y2 theta2 m2 shift enter and here are the new uh, the, uh, functions y the rotation moment and shear again it's not a very good uh, approximation because the shear is zero and finally I'm going to utilize another approximation which is y4 I'm going to add here another term a4 multiplied by x bar 4 to call this a3 y3 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 and the boundary conditions are the same y3 y3 the potential energy 3 is associated with the this assumption for y3 and now we have three equations because I added an extra term which is a4 and these are all the potential energy three three equations solve these three equations to find a2 a3 and a4 equation one equation two equation three y3 is equal to y3 after I utilize the solution I have theta three theta three 
m3 v3 shift enter and here is the solution now let's plot all these I have the values for E and I I know that L is equal to 10 meters uh, I know that I is equal to given as 4 multiply by 10 power 8 uh, but that's in millimeter power 4 so so to change it into meters I need to divide by 1000 power 4 so this is the moment of inertia Young's molecules is equal to 200 gigapascal I'm using kilonewton per meter squared so I'm going to make this into kilopascal so 200 1 2 3 makes it into mega 1 2 3 makes it into kilopascal and then EI is equal to EE multiplied by II and now let's plot let's just needs plot uh, the legend as well and I'm going to plot y exact let's see if I call it y exact I called it y exact yes so y exact y1 y2 y3 x is from 0 to L axis x is label The horizontal is x in meters. And the vertical is y also in meters. Shift enter. Let's just make sure that everything is correct so far. Indeed, these are the displacement functions. And now I would like to add a legend. Plot legend. The first one is exact. And then y1, y2, y3. This should be plot legends. Shift enter. And you can see the exact solution and the green solution are on top of each other when I used Y3. Y1 and Y2 are on top of each other and they're getting closer to the exact solution. And you can plot the rotation as well. Theta, theta. 1, theta 2, theta 3, and instead of y, theta, theta 2, theta 3, and the, ax the axis label instead of y, this will be rotation. Shift enter, and here is the rotation of the beam. And this concludes our uh, class, and I hope you uh, um, uh, enjoyed uh, the Mathematica tutorials, and uh, good luck in your future um, classes.